Oh man, I am like adrenaline pumping through me right now. This is so fun. <laughs> In this series, we're traveling across Canada by train using Via Rail. And today, we're boarding North America's oldest named passenger rail service, the Ocean. But the goal of this series is to showcase what is unique and authentic about each province here in Canada. And so, last week, we started by riding on North America's largest passenger ferry to get to our starting point in Newfoundland and Labrador, where we found the remnants of the lost railway. As we crossed Newfoundland, we came across oddly named towns, a passionate cod fisherman, a national park that looked like both Mars and the fjords of Norway, before wrapping up our experience with ATVing to a lake for moose burgers. And that was only episode one. Today, we're taking the train from Halifax, Nova Scotia, to Moncton, New Brunswick. But along the way, to discover what Nova Scotia is truly like, we'll learn to dance with the Eskasoni First Nation, we'll try log running with a seven-time world champion, and even try our hand at lobster fishing and surfing. I'm Mike, this is the ocean, this is Halifax, Nova Scotia, and this is Downey Live Travels by Train, presented by True Earth. And this is Halifax Station. It's our starting point, and it's also the most eastern train station in North America. So we're gonna board our train here and head to Moncton. Now taking the train from Halifax to Moncton today will take about four hours and 15 minutes, but if we had taken the bus, which leaves an hour earlier, it would only take about three and a half hours. A little bit faster, but we'll enjoy the train a lot more. Now before we go inside, I wanna show you across the street from the station is the Peace and Friendship Park. And on that note, I'm bringing my friend Will along on this trip, so this is him. <laughs> Let's go! Oh wow. It's like kind of grand and kind of quaint at the same time. Oh, it's beautiful. So the train we're taking today is called the Ocean and it connects Halifax to Montreal in about 24 hours. We're actually a little bit early, so let's head to the Cabot Trail. The Cabot Trail is known as Canada's most scenic highway as you drive 298 kilometers through the Cape Breton Highlands National Park. The weather is changing. Supposed to be the most scenic highway in Canada. Can't see a thing, but I'm actually really enjoying it. So different types of weather give you different experiences. Wow, wow. Not a single building in sight. Just green rolling hills. Where is everybody? <laughs> viewpoint after viewpoint. I mean, just look at this. And as much as it's meant to be driven, well, we wanted to fully experience it before sitting on a train for hours. It's nice when you pass other Canadians on the trail. There's always that nice hello interaction that you get. Morning. Hi. Morning. Morning. Hello. Morning. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Each national park is unique and different, but each of them are equally as incredible. The nice thing about the train is it gets you from A to B, but it's important to make sure you enjoy point A and point B. And so today, while well, we're in the Cabot Trail. On the Cabot Trail along the Bredore Lake, we came across Eskasoni cultural journeys and pulled in to learn a little bit more about the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, we are at, of course, Cultural Journeys Goat Island. Today we'll be learning a bit about the Mi'kmaq way of life and through our cultural journey. And so what does Eskasoni mean? Eskasoni means Wehistohani, place of the fir trees are plentiful. Uh, this here is a wigwam. Uh, wigwam is the Mi'kmaq word for uh, our houses. You would use birch bark for these, but in a case if I didn't have birch bark, uh, if I was trading, I can get old ship sails and I can simply wrap it around the structure for to protect me from the elements. Now it's hard to learn about an entire culture in a couple of hours, but they managed to teach us to dance. appreciate the art of drumming. Oh, that, sound. that sound was the first sound you ever heard in your life. How to bake bread over a fire on a stick. And the importance of smudging away bad feelings and thoughts. 
Sorry, what was your name? Uh, my name is Dre, Dre Tony. Dre, Yeah. nice to meet you. Dre is teaching us to smudge, which is a ritual to bring in the good energy and remove the bad energy. Now, today we're burning buffalo white sage to create the smoke. And traditionally, they would have used a shell from the area, like an oyster shell or a mussel. But through trading over the years, well, they were able to get bigger shells. This is an abalone shell from the West Coast. Yes. This one's just a little bigger now. Yes, it is a little bigger and a little thicker too, so you don't burn your hand as much. <laughs> the eagle flies the highest and closest to the heavens. So whenever we're feeling low, we like to smudge and sage, right? It's a good cleanse for bringing the great energy and releasing the bad energy. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we think about our messenger, right? The eagle, and he's the closest to the heavens, so you know, that's where our thoughts and minds go. So you just, I just like to smudge my hands and then smudge your mind and smudge your head so you can think about great things you know think about positive things okay. and you can do your ears so you could hear positive things you know hear great things and smudge your mouth so you could say positive things and great things as well the mind the eyes see positive thoughts the heart the legs you know me my videos are normally high energy adventure but this I suddenly feel very calm. That's good. It's, it's supposed to make you feel calm. It makes you feel relieved. relieved. Yeah. Yes. This was honestly a really fun and engaging experience as I had a lot of hands-on activities involved in their storytelling. And I found this to be a very valuable way to learn more about Nova Scotia and the Mi'kmaq people. I plan on visiting an indigenous tourism experience in every single province. And so we'll see the drastic change from one to the next. So I hope that this inspires you a little bit for your next trip to go visit a local indigenous experience, wherever that might be, because it's some of the best way to get an insight as to life right here. And now we're about to board North America's longest, hang on, let me finish, not longest train, longest continuously operating named passenger train in North America. It started running in 1904. Now the interesting thing about the ocean compared to other via rail trains is that it uses the slightly more modern European Renaissance cars, which has this green livery rather than the old school stainless steel. But to connect them, this is a transition car because the couplers for the European Renaissance cars and the stainless steel cars are different. So this is an empty shell of a train with just a carpeted corridor simply to be able to connect the two. In fact, let me show you. This is the connection car. It's, it's empty. There's nothing from window to window. Nothing here other than the carpeted corridor and a little bit of nice history on some of the flags here. But as we go out the other side of the transition car into the modern Renaissance cars, it actually brings us into the service car, which is a little like a cafe. It has seating for about 13 people, and I have to say, this is probably one of the best places to sit on the train. It's a lot more open, a lot more friendly. Obviously, during non-COVID times, this would be a very social space and a place to come get some food and coffee. There are two things I really like about riding the train. Here's the first, the amount of legroom you get unparalleled. And the other nice thing is you can recline before we leave. Oh wow, this goes, this goes really far back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're off and the series has officially begun. Now I know what you're thinking and yes, I agree. It is definitely time for our famous Downy Live bathroom tour. Oh. This is better than I expected. This is so white. This is very nice. Feels very clean. Standard toilet, as you'd expect. Extra toilet paper, wonderful. Little window, good natural light. Great mirrors, hello. Soap under here, hand towels there. Nice. And an emergency help button, perfect. A coat hook in case the business gets too serious and you have to hang your coat and uh, Light switch in case you want any bathroom selfies. Is that still a thing? It's basic, but very clean. I'm impressed. I normally prefer to eat in the dining car when I'm traveling on Via Rail, but that's reserved for sleeper car guests only at the moment. So in economy, we get our box goods. But Via Rail said they've done a better job of picking local products from local communities. This actually, as a falafel, looks pretty decent. Now everyone rides the train differently. I like to get a window seat and look at the views. <coughs> well, this is a good way to make use of your time. Yeah. <laughs> and this train goes through Nova Scotia off the beaten path. We're not along roads. So this is the most scenic time of year to experience this train. 
This train is called the ocean, but through most of Nova Scotia, it's lakes, forests, farms, small towns. And we've picked the best time of year to do this because it's fall, so the leaves are changing colors. We're getting a lot of yellows, oranges, reds. It's fantastic. But forestry is a big part of the industry out here in Nova Scotia, and so I think we need to go learn a little bit more about it. Let's go meet Darren. Oh, she's a lively one, folks. Oh. Are you trying to control it or just riding with it? Whoa! Uh, this thing's trying to control me, I think. Was this your childhood? Was this just <laughs> fun for you outdoors growing up? I am no stranger to rolling on logs, buddy. The balance and control is, is really impressive. Thanks. I'm not so good on land. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! Now, we have a new competitor that's just arrived. This is Darren's mother. Yes. Patty, pleasure to meet you. What are we doing? Crosscut saw. Yeah, yeah. Crosscut saw. Have um, you done this before? Yes, I have done it before. Okay. And I rather enjoy it. It's yeah. it's a dry sport instead of log rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your feet dry on this yeah. one. Will and I have our work cut out for us. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Here we go. We have the official timer. Ready, set, go. Now it started off as a friendly competition for all nice of us. Start, guys, there you go. Don't push. But I think now. right around here is where we all took it more seriously. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh. Nice cut, Mama. We have under 30 seconds is the uh, oh. time to beat. Under time. 34 seconds. No. Oh. <laughs> Patty and Darren get it with five seconds. I've been cutting big timber like this for so long now. I'm thinking I'm starting to have sawdust for brains. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Once we realized we wouldn't be able to beat Darren and Patty. Well, Will and I figured we'd challenge each other to a best of three lumberjack competition. First up is the saw race, which is a lot more technical than it looks. It's a balance of speed, force, and finesse. And with our pride on the line, the deciding moment is right here. Now the next activity is a little more accuracy based. We'll be using some precision instruments here. It's like bowling when you gotta pick your ball. Yeah, that's... Well, this one here, it's got definitely got a bullseye in it for you, buddy. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Oh, boy, that. Oh my goodness! He oh, called yeah. it! Let me get a bullseye for you. Now, axe throwing is a more common sport these days, but Darren has custom designed the world's best throwing axe. It's called the Wild Axe Dragon. And as we had a few warm up throws, Will got it right away. While I did it. Oh! <laughs> hey, this is, this is the, the boom I'm lucky I'm not any stronger, because otherwise I'd be. I'd be swimming for this. Yeah. I thought I was gonna have to hold on to you there. <laughs> but the warm up isn't what counts, so let's see if I can pull it together in the competition. You and your style. Oh, when it counts. That is four points right there. He's cutting that four point line, so that throw is good. We're good, we're on the board. Two points. Oh, no. oh. All Will needs to do here is to hit four or better, and you take the lead, he can't even touch you, man. Whoa! Three, Three points. points! Woo! You've left the window open for me to win by one point if I get a bullseye. If you're ever in your career gonna hit a bullseye, now is the time. Yeah, now is the time. All right, Dragon, I need this. Congratulations, Will. This is it. This is the tiebreaker right here. Yeah. The stage has been set. This is the final event, folks. Who's ready to go. Can you tell Darren is a commentator as well? Yeah. <laughs> he is so good at setting this up. Oh, the drama is unfolding as we speak. <laughs> now we're really learning from the best here because Darren won the Log Rolling World Championship seven times. But today, wow. it's between Will and I. Ready? And neither of us are going easy on the other. Turn in. Pulls him hard. Oh. That's one. And time in. One more. Oh. Time. Time in. Ooh, man. I am like adrenaline pumping through me right now. This is so fun. <laughs> Daddy, time in. Oh, did he get back there? Oh. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. You're good? Yeah, 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 okay? yeah, yeah. All right, here it is. The finale right here on the log. Time in. And oh, he had one way and then the other. 
Run Mike still victorious. Thank you to Darren. World Phenomenal. champ, seven yeah. time. <laughs> you guys are amazing. You guys oh, are thanks. the champs for sure. Canada has all sorts of amazing, unique, authentic activities. You just have to get out and explore a little bit more and you might just run into Darren if you're in Nova Scotia. Buddy, oh. here you go. <laughs> Thank you, it. Darren. So, yeah. You've made me the uh, the new chairman <laughs> of log rolling. Oh, yes. Chairman of the board. Appreciate it. <laughs> wow, what an honor. All right, guys. So, I think it's that time, and you've earned it. It's here the, we go. This is the, the only way an event like this can end. There we go. Uh, wow. Does he really use the axe for everything? Pretty much. Pretty, yes. Okay, yeah, okay. Cheers. cheers. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. To a good day. And after that Canadian authentic experience, I think we've earned a cold one here. By the fire, we're gonna share some stories, but I will leave that to us, and we'll see you right now. Now back on the train, Emma, who was sitting across the aisle from us, asked nicely if she could swap seats with Will briefly so she could take a picture of her house as we go past. We've seen the train go by. Every single day of my life. <laughs> but, never, but never been on it. No. What's the town called? It's called Windsor Junction. Oh, okay. The town is essentially named after the railroad junction. Yes. There, I think, is where the tracks were the Windsor. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so that's where it got the Windsor Junction name. Gotcha. Well, it's always tough to decide when you take a seat on the train which side you want to sit on for the views. Anyway, I think on this one we're going to be okay either side you sit on. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Except Emma lives on this side, so she's yes. here. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked the wrong seat when yeah. I got on. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Are we going to be able to see it? Oh, it's so grown up. Is that it? It's the one with the white fence. Oh, it's so grown. Oh, it's so nice with the Nova Scotia flag. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Cute little place. So I'm looking at the menu right now and I don't see any lobster. We're in Nova Scotia and I know lobster is the specialty here so I was hoping there would be some on the menu but maybe that's a little ambitious with Via Rail. But I'm still curious to know how lobster is fished here in Nova Scotia. So we're heading out on a lobster fishing boat not just to see where our food comes from but to see what this is like as a livelihood. Many, many Nova Scotians rely on the lobster industry for their job. And so Tamara, when it's not the lobster fishing season, she runs her boat as lobster tours so that people like you and I can come on board and see what it's really like to catch a lobster and with a lobster trap and how you ban them and how do you take care of them safely without hurting the lobster and getting them back to shore. And it's fantastic to spend a day on the water when the weather is like this. The first thing to know is that the lobster season is limited to prevent overfishing and they can only catch males of a certain size and never a female carrying eggs, which all helps to keep the population size healthy. Now the lobster traps are designed to let lobsters in and not let them out, obviously. But the cage is designed to let out fish and other small creatures that might have found their way in. Now since this isn't lobster season, these lobsters have in fact been placed in this trap for us to see how it works when they pull it out. But it does demonstrate the process, including measuring the lobster and checking if they're male or female before we band them. Yes. Now these lobsters can pinch with the pressure of 100 pounds per square inch, which means you don't want their claws anywhere near you until they're banded. So with that in mind, they put elastic bands on the claws, obviously, so the lobsters can't pinch you or each other while they're in the hold. We don't want the lobsters damaging each other before they get to your plate. Not only is the lobster good for food, but it's also the livelihood for the residents here. This is their job, their businesses. They own these boats and a lobster fishing license costs 850,000 Canadian dollars just for the license. And that doesn't include all the traps, the boats, and everything else that goes into fishing for lobster. Now I know lobster fishing is pretty stereotypical for Nova Scotia, so I thought a more immersive experience would be an activity based on its license plate. Canada's ocean playground. You can't come to Nova Scotia and just look at the ocean. You gotta get into it. So we're going surfing. Even though Canada is the country with the most coastline in the world, it has never been known as a surfer's paradise. Now with that being said, Lawrencetown here is not only the best spot in the province, but one of the few places in Canada where you can surf. Now I'm clearly not the best surfer, but it's good to be out here and splash around in Canada's ocean playground. Ooh. Not 
bad out here, is it? So we've been on the road for about a week and a half, which means it's time to do some laundry. Now this whole series is presented by True Earth, and that's a good thing because actually all of us, no matter where you are, whether you're traveling or at home, we all have to do laundry at some point, and I've been on the road for a week and a half. Now they have the laundry detergent strips, but they also have a whole bunch of other products. This is the True Earth, well, I call it a laundry bag. But they're actually reusable cotton mesh produce bags, but they've been great for holding my laundry when I'm on the road. It's vented, which is great to make sure your dirty laundry doesn't get absolutely disgusting in your bag after a while. Okay, ah, here's the laundry room, great. So, the first thing you wanna do is, well, we're gonna open up the laundry machine. Empty this out. These are the True Earth Eco Strips. It's very compact, significantly smaller than standard liquid detergent, which is the benefit. A, for me traveling, I can fit this in my bag, but also how easy it is to do laundry with this. To use the Eco Strip, simply tear it in half. One for a regular size load, two if you have a big load, which we don't today. And the other nice thing is it doesn't matter what kind of laundry machine you're using, you know, when you're traveling, they change all the time. Top loading, front loading, cold water, hot water, this will work in anything. Casual, because I'm like that. So if you want to pick some up for yourself, you can check them out at the link in the description down below and use discount code DOWNYLIVE for 10% off. Save yourself a little money and help save the environment while you're at it. Also, thank you True Earth for presenting this whole series. And no trip to Nova Scotia would be complete without a visit to the quintessential quaint fishing village that is Peggy's Cove. It's actually a Canadian heritage site, so it is fully protected. So that's why it stands as it did almost 100 years ago. They're all original homes. Some of them have been converted slightly to be B&Bs or Airbnbs now, but most of them are still local families that live here. Of course, there's a couple that have been turned into arts and craft shops, a little cafe, and there's a restaurant at the top. We've had some pretty incredible sunsets so far if you watched Newfoundland's episode last week, but this place here is maybe one of the most peaceful experiences you can have. There's just a couple of tourists walking around, otherwise you feel like you have the entire village to yourself. I'm sure that's probably different in the summer, but everyone comes for the photo at sunset by the lighthouse. So I'm calling my mom, because she grew up in Nova Scotia here. She actually just grew up 30 minutes down the road in Halifax, so we'll see if she answers and see what she says. Mom, if you're watching this, I tried to call you. Love you. If the train we're taking tomorrow is taking us from point A to point B, and it's important to enjoy point A and point B just as much as the train journey itself, but if this is point A, I can't wait to see point B. New Brunswick, you have big shoes to fill. Newfoundland and Nova Scotia have been incredible. I had high expectations for Nova Scotia, and Canada's ocean playground does not disappoint. Not only in the way that every activity is water-based, whether it's surfing, lobster fishing, log rolling, or even the name of the train that we're on, but everyone we spent time with has represented Nova Scotia better than I could have imagined. Whether it's sharing their culture and history through dance, music, and food, or cracking a cold one by the fire after a fierce competition, they couldn't have been a more fun, friendly, and welcoming group of people. Now, my mom was born and raised in Nova Scotia, and I've been a few times, and every time I visit, reminds me of why I need to come back. Now, this train is the reason we're traveling across Canada, and I hope this episode is the reason you need to come see Nova Scotia. And wait for it, wait for it. We're about to come up to it. This post right there, that is the official border between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, which means we've just entered into our third province of this trip, which means that this, this video is over because it's one episode per province. And now that we're in New Brunswick, well, that's next week's episode. It looks a lot like this. New Brunswick is most beautiful at this time of year. So we made sure to explore it from every possible angle. That's right, land, water, and air. Starting in the coniferous forest at the Red Bank Lodge and exploring the national historic sites of the Menapanagyag Heritage Park while learning more about the local Mi'kmaq people. Next, we explored the Bay of Fundy, famous for having the world's highest tides by walking below the flower pot sea stacks driving along the newly completed scenic parkway and ending on the water with some new friends. Finally, to see New Brunswick by air, we went up with Canada's oldest flying school. New Brunswick and its cute covered bridges might be the most surprising province yet. And I can't wait to show it to you 
next week. Now we have just arrived in New Brunswick, but I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. So I'm Mike, this is Downey Live Travels by Train, and I'll see you next week.